bless us to be in the house of prayer. Yes, yes. Lord bless us to be in the house of prayer. We have so much to do. Thank you, Father. There's so many people that would like to be. I'd love to be in the house of prayer. Not able to be in the house of prayer. So we all we always be thankful to God when He blesses us to be in the house of prayer. So today we thank God for each of you here to share in this service. Today we thank God for all of his blessings we give unto to God, to the ministers, to the missionary, to all the saints of God. We give unto to our children on today. It's a great blessing to be among the saints. The Bible that you're hearing to be a mom know who? That what? Sanctify. So when you are sanctified, when we come together, we draw strength one from another. So we have so much to be thankful for when God blesses us. And on today, we just thank God for each of you again we say, thank God for his blessing. And today we're gonna be speaking uh, from uh but media passes the scripture and uh the Bible just tell you what we're gonna speak from. I know all of you will be able to just repeat it like that because every Sunday when we uh we read this particular scripture. If I were to ask Brother Baker if he look at him any of you you all can tell this Bible. St. Matthew 16, 18. For upon this what? I will build what? My church. In the gates of hell. Today, scripture, today's text, the invisibility of the church in this future. The invisibility of the church in this future. So today we looked at uh, the church, the church as Christ up on this rock. I will work and build my, my church. church. And the gates of her hell. Uh, sometimes people might say Haiti, hey, but hell and hey, Haiti, all, all the same. <laughs> so, the invisibility, if we break the word invisibility down, is that it cannot be conquered or overcome. The unconquered. I say the unconquerable church and its future. Christ said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. He didn't say, you know what that church? He said, my church. All right, now. All right. So, if we talk about the invisibility of the unconquerable, I use unconquerable church and its future, we read the scripture. We are either quote it, it's like Matthew 16, 18, where Christ said, uh, here, unto thee that our people of the church have built my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Prevail against it. Uh, so many times he said, prevail, and that Jesus said, it will not be overtaken by Satan. My church is going to work forever stand. Uh, prevail is to gain the advantage of mastery. My church will never be conquered. Uh, my church will never uh, go under anyone. So today we're talking about the church and its uh, future. The unconquerable church and its future. Uh, we know that the church does have a future. And like I said, I've been in church all my life. My parents brought me up in the church. I can remember my mother's teaching how some Sunday we would just walk the hot, dusty road. Yo, know, it was not all the way that we had a vehicle. Now, you know, the Lord has blessed. The Lord has blessed so much there last. Lord bless so sometimes we have people have two and three cars. Sitting in there, right. you know, but then last time on Sunday morning, 
Go two or three cars, don't even roll toward what? Praise God. God had blessed the soul and brought him from such a long way. So, so many times in that day and time, uh, we would walk to church. And, uh, uh, I would walk along with my mother. And she would always talk to me about you need to be saved. You need to be saved. She always told me that I need to be saved. So that's one of the reasons I think I'm here, standing here today, is simply because of my mother's teaching when I was just a child. Uh, then she taught me. And the scripture said, you ought to train up a what? Child. In the way he should what? No. Go. And he would what? So you train up a child. So I didn't have an opportunity like some people might have today. Uh, that's something you picked about him. I didn't have an opportunity for someone to ask me, are you going, do you want to go to church today? Uh -uh, no, I didn't have an opportunity. So my mother and I said we used to walk the uh, high dusty roads and get to church. I'd be sitting in church a lot of time wishing I could be at home pitching horseshoes or put a shoe, a shoe mob. You know, lots of young people don't know it's that much about pitching my shoe, shoe mob and roll the tide, but that's about all we uh, uh that's about all we had back then. <laughs> but shoe mob and horseshoes or else roll tide. And I said I'd be sitting there wishing I could be at home during that. But my parents kept me in the church. Uh, else, you know, uh, uh out in the woods, you know, I loved it. I was, I used to love to roam the woods, picking up uh, hickory nuts. Some of them come. I remember my aunt Thelma. You drive over to the house. We had a scary bar. There was no difference between hickory nuts and scary bar. Yeah. I know some. I know lots of y'all would. She used to drive over. She walk down behind the house. We had a tree that had scary bars. You know, many times we couldn't find no and pick them up by the bucket for it. I don't want to kind of be in the wood picking up hip, hip and us, uh, scaly bars, or else busted out, but the Lord didn't leave my mother in that way. She said, you be in the church. But last time, in the late afternoon, we could get out and do certain things. And uh, many times, you know, uh, we would be wanting to do those things. We couldn't do them, and we weren't allowed to do them. But God kept us in the church. Through my mother, she kept us in the church because she wanted us to be saved. <laughs> I can remember us walking in hot, dusty roads as I reminisce. One Sunday, we walked, and you know back then, somebody used to say, you could hear the music way down the road. You didn't have to have way to old church to be. You could have, didn't have to have no other charge, but there's music way down the road. All right, all right. Anybody remember Rich Woods? First old church. Amen. Mother Brad, she couldn't have a help but hit music way down the road. But God has blessed me. Amen. And, a long way. <laughs> long way. And we were getting in a hurry. So one side of we were really little late in his start service. And we were coming to church. And my mother, uh, we got in her. We could hear the music and the saint praying God. She got in church. Look like Sony, she got in church. She got joined. She prayed the Lord all up in front of the church. And I was sitting there asking. Oh my God, she put her shoes down. She dancing in those, oh, you know, she had the old toe up shoes like you know, she would wear down that gravel road and carry her shoes in hand. She, yeah. she fed in the shower. She looked down and said, Saints, I forgot. They said, You know, we don't pay that no attention. All we're going to do is praise God so many times. And nowadays, we get too caught up in what? Clothes. But, you know, I thank God that He blessed us where we could dread. Yeah. And look good. So all of you are looking good today. Give yourself a hand. That is the blessing of the Lord. So I can remember in the complication visiting uh, Quillen's head in a message he preached in the next in the complication. He said he remember when he was a boy growing up. One Sunday he said that uh, his father, his parents had to go out of town for the weekend. So they decided he and his brother and sister, we not gonna go to church today. And they stayed at home, so they were outside, him and his brother was on their knees, just shooting marbles, and the sisters and now done what they wanted to do. Here comes this sanctified woman. 
Come on. She said, uh huh, the devil will get in one day, you gonna go to hell. Say, so, you know, you pray of God, you ain't going to church, so you're gonna go to hell. Then the devil sure gonna get you. So that night, he said, when they got ready to go to bed, their sister said, now you remember what that sanctified woman said, she said, the devil gonna get us. They were so scared, so they were all children, they were so scared. So I tell you what to do. So y'all go out and get the pitchfork. You know, no more pitch. I mean, all y'all remember that. Go get all the knives. They got the pitch off. They got the knife. They got everything out the kitchen. And then they went in and they got a big stick. So the devil come and end up in here and might be sure and kill it. They even locked the door. They were waiting for the devil. So if the devil come up, he's gonna be a dead devil. So after they locked the room up and hid in the room. The next morning they got up, they said the only thing they had was a stick and knife, pitch fork and everything they could get up, and no dead devil. Oh, no. See, they were looking for the devil to come, dressed up in a red suit, oh, no. pitch fork in his hand, and long tail. You all know how they symbolize the devil. Amen. Elder Little told me several times in his daytime, he said, you know, they used to have plays, and they would select him to play the devil. They put yeah. Tail on and red stuff on, so he said, I could really play the devil. <laughs> oh, Bill said, he could play the devil. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell y'all something. The devil don't come in red suits. Tell last time the devil come in pit striped suit. Alright. Shiny shoes, yeah. yeah. pretty necktie, yeah. come in pretty white dresses, pink dresses, yeah. blue dresses, yeah. calm. Short dresses, long dresses, yellow, gold, all kind of dresses. Don't look for the devil come up to you and don't tell me there's no red pitchfork in his hand and all that. So that's what they were looking for. So I'm going to tell you all today that they did not kill the devil. The devil is still alive. He's still roaming uh, the street. So today we must talk about the invisibility of the church. The uncomfortable church in this future. The church will stand. And the church will forever stand. Yeah. That would be many things that the church would be confronted with, but the church will always stand. Yeah. You'll be confronted with a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. Missionary Brian Messer on last Sunday was talking about the two bills that went out to build. Mm -hmm. One bill up on the sand mm -hmm. and one bill up on a rock. Yeah. Yeah. Now that storm came against the building that was on the rock. And this came also against the building that was on what? The sand. But one thing about it, that building that was built up on the rock was able to stand because he had dug down deep and set it on a good foundation. So in order for you to stand, you got to build up on the rock. A good foundation, built up on the rock, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. So today we are talking about the uncomfortable church in its future. Now the songwriter wrote the song one day. The word uh, up on this side of the rock, I stand all on the ground and what? Sink and sand. But we are talking about the church. Uh, we see that the church will go through a lot of things. The storms will come against the church. The problems will come in the church. And I've been in this church long as I've been in this church. I don't get excited or get upset when people come and go. I've seen a many come and go since I've been here. But the church is going to what? Stand. It's going to stand because it's formed on the rock. Even when James Arthur Bryant Sr. is dead and gone, this church is going to what? Stand. This church is not built upon James Bryant and, and Billy and Jody and Susie. This church is built up on a rock, which is Jesus Christ. So no matter who comes and goes, this church is going to what? Stand. This church is uncomfortable. Sometimes people are trying to tear the church down and take the church down, but this church of God is going to stand because it's built up on a what? Side of rock. When we talk about the church, Paul sees the church as an organ of Christ. You name this members to himself and in him to one another. The true church nature is revealed by what has been done through the Spirit. And so our Christianity is the church will stand. 
The church was built on a solid foundation. The church is the temple of the presence of God. When we think of the church, we think of what? Fellowship. When we think of the church, we think of what? Fellowship. I think of fellowship when I think of the church. It is, it is fellowship among the saints. We should fellowship among ourselves. When there's confusion and there's bickering, and like Paul was saying, this shouldn't be among the same confusion, division, and bickering, and hatred. And Mine. Mine. We look at the church as fellowship. And when we talk to people about being saved, and when we bring someone in, if they see us fighting among ourselves, and bickering among ourselves, and hatred among ourselves, one can't stand this, and one can't stand that. You got your own little man at work, you say, call it. You look sick. But God want us to be together. The church, when we think of church, we think of what? Fellowship, being together. I had a scripture saying, where two or three are gathered together in my name, testing yeah. me, I am in what? Mr. Yeah. Being. Yeah. So the church is an organ that is both human and divine. Mm -hmm. Being divine is more than a meeting house. Wow. Are a covenant of people organized for religious purpose. This church is more than just uh, me play. This church is built up on spirituality. This church is built up on Jesus Christ. It's more than a me play for a couple of people uh, for religious purpose. It is a creation of God. It's life come from God. It is the body of pride, simulated by the Holy Ghost as she does her work. The church is composed of men living in knowledge. It perfect in life and some are simple. Pope, yeah, Pope, Bishop, Pastor, Superintendent, Convention, Convocation. Lots of these places you can go to. A uh, lot of times you might see where someone fell. You do have people in the church that will what? Fail. Someone looking on this man that fell. Someone said Brother Swagger fell. Someone said Tim Baker fell. Someone said this and that. But people build your life up on Jesus Christ. So out and they cry. Oh, they just seem like they couldn't make it any long. Sure, I got a leader. I, got, I respect my leader, the superintendent, my bishop. I respect all my leadership. But I'm building my life up on Jesus Christ. It's very important. Yeah. The Holy Ghost does the work. Church is composed of men, as I said, limited in knowledge. But it don't have to be you. If anyone fell, it don't have to be you, 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 you. Because it will be present in the church. People, I don't want you to get your mind so set where it's you. So set on certain things where you can get so set where if someone in the church that you confide in, someone fell, fail you and let you down and it just makes you just can't go on and further. But it's going to be people in the church that are going to fail. It's going to be people in the church that are going to do some things. But they need to get that life there. Now God is a what? Forgiving God. I don't like the person they have. I don't like the person they have. But when I, uh, uh, when I swag I fail. One thing I have watched, I watched on the news sometimes. But he failed. All those cycles in there, they were saying, get that do this and do that. He ain't no, they said, Lord, restore. Lord, bless. Lord, Lord, forgive. Uh, he, he, he made a mistake, but Lord, forgive. Yeah, it's hurt and composed with people, but there will be some people that are not really perfect. There will be some people in the church that are not living like they should, but he said, let the wheat and the tear grow together. He said, what I do is separate them.
said. Yeah. You see me in the church uh, called me to follow the example that Christ had. They put the best member of the church and not the example. The best member of the church is not the example. Right. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something. When I was growing up, it was some people in that church, Bishopwood Church. I've I been in my life. Those people, one, I would go to the Those people, that's for good people. Not one, not one speck of anything. But amen. Lots of these people, they go on to be with the Lord. But they were not the perfect example to follow. You got to follow who? Jesus Christ. The church is moving from one land to another, from one age to another, to the earth full of with the knowledge of Christ. When this gospel has been spread throughout all of the earth, then shall the end come. Second Matthew 24, 14, if you want to read that. When it's spread throughout all the world, then shall the end come. We are bouncing off satellite. We have got television that covers the world. We got a uh, foreign country that's sending missionaries everywhere. So today, this gospel is going to be preached to all the parts of the world. When we talk about the church, we must remember that the very material for the, the erection of the church was not by a lonely fisherman. It was not by a lonely fisherman. It was not by a denying disciple. Not by a swearing, cursing Peter. Not by a copy of our building firm, but by the word of God himself. He operated by the Holy Spirit. So the church lived to the because Jesus lived. All that power and all kingdom have come and gone, but the church is still here because his hero lived. His hero is Jesus Christ in the church. The church stands the corrosion of years and morality and my man. The church stands against all the ways of sin. It stands against the unknown powers of darkness, the underworld. It stands against all these things. The church is going to stand because he feels on Jesus Christ. Mother Jesus, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Sure. going to come against this church. But this church is going to stand. Here we see that in order to destroy a tree, you must destroy it. When we destroy a building, we must destroy its foundation. We can man and even man throughout this life try to destroy the church by having Jesus hang on the tree outside of Jerusalem. But God raised him from the dead. I heard him say, He is alive forevermore. The church is the founder of the Lord. The fact that he was one dead, but now he is alive. The fact that he was one dead, but he lived alive. How I know he lived because he lived to me. If he know he lived, you raise your hand. And if the church lives and you every now and then, you ought to show some kind of sign. Some kind you ought to just pray. You ought to your hand on the door. You ought to speak in tongues. You ought to do something. Why don't you say yes or no? Sometimes people do things like that. Sometimes people are sad and forward and uh. Sometimes people are proud. But if you got it like you ought to have, you ought to do something. Sometimes why don't you say yes or no? And that elder man came by. Just bad at the walks of sun. What are you doing? He said, I'm flying my kite. He said, Well, I'm going to see no kite. Boy, you just, you just saying something. He told him, It ain't no kite up there. How do you know it's a kite up there, boy? He said, Yeah.
to die. Stephen was a deacon, but his, he, 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 was, he was so full of hope. He was the first to die. They tried to destroy the church. Luke said, Paul requested a letter from the council. He said, I'm going to the master. If I find anybody in this way or that way, I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring them back and I'm going to arrest them and we're going to deal with them. But God arrested him on his way down to the master road. God arrested Paul, knocked him up, tied him up. I went, if you, if you read biblical history, you study the biblical history, the saints had a hard way to go. The body was lit in Rome for the lights of the city. They were tied to the tail of the horses and dragged through the streets. But the church kept on marching. Did not die. Why don't you say yes, Lord? Matthew was killed by the sword in Ethiopia. Made his head across the top. 
church is going to keep on marching. The church is going to come up. The church has a future. I might die, but the church is going to move on. I might die. See, there are many people die, but the church is going to move on. Paul said, I know the church is going to move on. I got to tell you about this. I can remember that was a time, that was a glory day. The saints, the saints were getting together. Thank you. 